All right, so we're in section 3.3. Um, in the last class, I said these were, were, were the soothing properties of logarithms because they were, everybody was worked up from the, from the lockdown drill. Um, so hopefully we find them soothing as well. All right, so yesterday we talked about logarithmic functions as inverse functions of exponential functions. So we said y equals a to the x, and our inverse function, we said that meant that we could rewrite this in logarithmic form, log base a of y equals x. So these were, this was our relationship switching from logarithmic form to exponential form. And we said that we could think of logarithms. Here's my x. We can think of logarithms as exponents. Logarithms are exponents. So our properties of logarithms that we're going to talk about today come from the fact that logarithms are exponents. So they're related to the properties of properties of exponents. Now the first thing we're going to talk about comes from properties of exponents and we'll, we'll talk about it first and then we'll show how it comes from the properties in, in, in just a little bit. We want to know how to change, change the base of our logarithm. We said yesterday that, that our, base, our base really doesn't matter because we can always change it. One reason that we want to change our base is because most of our calculators will only calculate log base 10 or log base e, the natural log. So if we want to find the logarithm of something that's not in base 10 or base e, we need to do our change of base formula. Some newer calculators will do other bases, but most calculators will only do base 10 and base e. So if we have log base a of x. We can change the base to either base 10 or base e. We could change it to any base we want. This is the same as log x over log a. And when I write just log, what do, what do we mean? This is our base 10 when we don't write the base there. And this is also the same as the natural log of x over the natural log of a. And we'll talk about why this, why this works in just a second. So this is going to let us change any base to log base 10 or natural log, log base e. All right, so let's look at how we're going to, how we're going to use our change of base formula. Then we'll talk about some properties and why it works. So if we had the log base 5 of 18. And we wanted to evaluate this. We wanted to know what power we had to raise 5 to to get 18. Using the change of base formula, that's going to be the log of 18 over the log of 5, which is the same as the natural log of 18 over the natural log of 5. Calculate either one of those. Plug it in my calculator. And that's about um, 1.795. So 5 to about the 1.7, 1.8 power would give me 18. And I can use either one of these, whichever one, whichever one you want to calculate. Log base 2 of 42. That's going to be the log base 10. Sorry, log sorry, log of 10, log base 10 of 42 over the log of 2, which is the same as the natural log of 42 over the natural log of 2. Plug either one of these into my calculator, calculate, and you get about 5.3. Nine, two, 
So 2 to the about the 5.4 power would give me 42. If we had a problem in our book and it said graph in your calculator, So one of those problems that said use your graphing utility to do such and such with this graph. Y equals log base 3 of X. Well our calculator won't, won't give us a log base 3 of something. So we could graph Y equals log X over log 3 or we could graph the natural log of x over natural log of 3. So we would just plug natural log of x over natural log of 3 into our y equals, and that would give us our graph of the graph of log base 3 of x. So this gives us a way to, to graph in our calculator in logs other than 10 or, or base 10 or base 10. All right, questions? Or questions there? Okay. Properties. Some properties of logarithms. Yesterday, the properties we listed for our properties, we, we listed a few properties of logarithms, and they were, they came from the logarithmic function and the exponential function being inverses of each other. Today, our properties come from logarithms being exponents. So our properties today are, are related to the properties of exponents. So first one, the log base A, we can do this for any base of x times y. And I'm going to write over here a reminder. So what, what do we do if we had x squared times x to the third. What do we do with the exponents? We add x to the fifth. Well, logarithms are exponents. Logarithms turn multiplication into addition. Yes? Yep. Doesn't, doesn't, our base doesn't matter. So when we're multiplying, our exponents add. These are exponents, so the exponents add. Our second property, and our base here, our base doesn't matter, log of x over y. And we talked about this for a second. What if we had x to the uh, 8 over x squared? We subtract, and we get x to the sixth. Logarithms, we subtract the exponents. Logarithms turn division into subtraction. And then our third property So what do we do if we have x squared to the third power? Multiply. When we have an exponent raised to an exponent, we multiply. So it turns this exponent into multiplication. So logarithms turn uh, multiplication into addition, turn division into subtraction, turn exponents into multiplication. And they come from, they come straight from these properties of exponents. Logarithms are exponents, so they follow the same rules as exponents. This third one is why the change of base formula works. So let's, let's 
show using this property of logarithms why the change of base formula works. So let's say we have um, y equals log base a of x. And we want to we want to change the base here. Well, how do I rewrite this in exponential form? A to the y equals x. Now let's say I want to convert, I want to change bases and I want to convert to natural log. I could do common log as well, but I'm going to use, I'll just choose natural log. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides of this equation. So I just took the natural log of both sides. Well, what does this third rule of exponents, or third rule of logarithms tell me I can do with this exponent? I can bring it out front and turn it into multiplication. Now I can divide both sides by a natural log of A. And we said that Y was log base A of X. So log base A of X equals natural log of X over natural log of A. And there's our change of base formula from this third property of, it, of logarithms. And I could do the same thing here. I could take, take the common logarithm of both sides and get the change of base formula for the common logarithm. But this rule is, is where the change of base formula comes from. And our homework, our homework tonight is going to be practicing with the, with the um, change of base formula and what we call expanding and contracting or condensing, expanding and condensing uh, logarithms. So I just want to do a couple of examples of working with these, these properties to expand or condense logarithms. All right, we good here? So we want to expand these. What, the reason that we'll expand logarithms is when we end up with logarithmic equations, we end up expanding logarithms to, to solve the equations. So let's expand log of 2x to the third, y to the fourth. All right, so logarithms, they turn multiplication into addition. So this is going to be log 2 plus log x to the third plus log y to the fourth. And as, as far as I can go, what about these exponents? Those turn into coefficients. They turn into multiplication. So this is going to be log 2 plus 3 log x plus 4 log y. And this would be this logarithm expanded. Questions on what we did there? All right, let's look at another one. Uh, natural log of square root of x plus 5 over y squared. Uh, first off, what, how can we rewrite, what's another way of writing x plus 5, the square root of x plus 5? x plus 5 to the 1 half. So 
So remember that roots, we can write roots as exponents. All right, so logarithms turn division into subtraction. So I can write this as x plus 5 to the 1 half minus natural log of y squared. And now these exponents turn into into what? Logarithms make exponents coefficients. Exponents become multiplication. So I get 1 half natural log of x plus 5 minus 2 natural log y. So when our problem says expand, expand the logarithm, this is what it's asking us to do. All right, questions on that one? Um, yes. Why is plus five minus The square root. Uh, the. So the square root. A uh, square root is the same as the one half power. So if we let's if I do the um, square root of x okay, yeah. and I square that, what do I get? Uh, one over x. Just x, right? And what so if I'm thinking back to what we were talking about with our exponents before, yeah. what am I doing to the exponents here when I raise an exponent to an exponent? Multiply, right? So what do we have to multiply by 2 to get 1? Wow. 1 half. So this is x to the 1 half squared equals x. So I'm multiplying 2 times 1 half. So we can rewrite the, the, the roots as exponents. So the third root would be the 1 third power. For example, the fifth root would be the 1 fifth power. And this is kind of an explanation as to why, why we think of them that way. So we're thinking of multiplying the exponents. Okay? All right, so condense. In your book, they, they use a, kind of a strange phrase for condense, condensing logarithms. So let me see what they call it, just so you're not confused when it says that. Um, they will say, uh, condense the expression to the logarithm of a single quantity. All they're asking you to do is condense. So don't don't be confused when they when they use use that phrase. Condense the logarithm into the logarithm of a single quantity. So there's our logarithm, and we want to condense this. So our first step. What do we do? So we're just going in the reverse of what we did before. What do we do with these, these coefficients? Turn them into exponents. So this is going to be log of x squared minus log of y to the third plus log of z to the one half. So I'm going to write that as square root of z. And logarithms turn uh, subtraction into division. So this is going to be the log of x squared over y to the third plus log square root z. And we turn multiplication, we turn, I gave it away, we turn addition into multiplication. So this is log of x squared square root z over y to the third. And that would be this logarithm condensed into a single logarithm. All right, questions, questions on what we did there?
All right, last one. All right, so here's our here's our expression. Um, when you see something like this, I would suggest you leave that one third out in front until the very end. Deal with that at the very end. So let's deal with this, this quantity inside the parentheses first. So we're going to turn these coefficients into exponents. So that's natural log of x squared minus natural log y to the fourth and minus natural log of z plus 2. All right, subtraction turns into division. And then subtraction is division again. So what do I get when I divide x squared over y to the fourth by z plus 2? What happened? Where do I put the z plus 2? On the bottom. So I write y to the fourth z plus 2. Everybody good there? Sometimes people find that, that a little bit confusing. Half of a fourth is an 8. You multiply the, multiply the denominators. All right. Now what do we do with this one-third? Let me get rid of these parentheses. So what happens to this coefficient? It becomes an exponent, and it's an exponent on the entire quantity. So the one-third we can rewrite as the third root. And there's our logarithm condensed. Yes? You could. I would be fine with this. It doesn't really matter. As long as everything's grouped together. Yeah? I was kind of confused how you went from the first step to the fourth. Like, you plus the bottom. Uh huh. Sure. So, we, if I think of this as division, Let's just think of what happened. So what, what I asked was, what we're looking at is what happens when we do x squared over y to the fourth divided by, divided by z plus 2, right? Divided by z plus 2. And when we divide, we can think of z plus 2 as, the, I'm just going to simplify, we can think of a z plus 2 as z plus 2 over 1. When we divide by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal, so that z plus 2 ends up in the bottom. Okay? The other way we could think of it, if it helps you think of it that way, is from here, we could say this was one third of the natural log of x squared minus, I could factor out that negative and put a parenthesis there, natural log of y to the fourth plus. natural log of z plus 2. So I factored out that negative sign. Mm -hmm. All so then this turns into multiplication and then the subtraction makes us divide by the entire thing. So we can think of it that way as well, if it helps. All right, questions? Questions there? So that's really all we're doing for tonight. Change of base, condensing, and expanding. Yeah? The, the previous one? Yeah. This one? And uh, I also want write, to write down a couple of common errors that I, that I want us to try to avoid.
All right. So logarithms, kind of like, um, kind of like sines and cosines, kind of like trig functions. So these common errors to avoid. Uh, the log of x plus or minus y does not equal, I can't just distribute the logarithm. So logarithm, I, I can't just say log of x plus y is log of x plus log of y. So that's, that's one common error. Remember that logarithms turn multiplication into addition. Log of x times the log of y doesn't equal log of x times y. So logarithms turn multiplication into addition. Doesn't turn multiplication into multiplication. So I'm not distributing. Sometimes students think of kind of distributing the logarithm. You don't want to do that. And log of x divided by log of y doesn't equal log of x over y. Logarithms turn division into subtraction, not division into division. And we can also say this doesn't equal log of x minus y. So our division has to be this way for it to equal log of x minus y. And it's actually not log of x minus y, it's log of x minus log of y. Turn division into subtraction. So these are common errors that, that, that you should avoid. All right, questions? Okay. EOE, every other even? Every other odd, EOO, every other odd? This one? 61. All right, there we go.